So the last time around we talked about the carburetor idle circuitry and all of its little nuances. And this time around we're going to move into the next phase, right, which is the carburetor transition circuits. And this is where your, your part throttle response and fuel economy and all of that become critical. So just like the other videos, I can't tell you how to do your exact carburetor because there are so many different variations. But I can explain how the basic systems work and then you can take it from there. So there's two types. There's a metering rod style which uh, all Edelbrocks, Rochesters, Carters use. And then there's the power valve style, which is, which is what Holly uses. So here, the power valve. This is where you find this thing right here. Underneath the flow pole, underneath the metering block, is your power valve. Now, if you're looking for the same thing on an Edelbrock or a Carter style carburetor, you find that right here. Let's pop this little cover off. Slide this out of the way. And here is the Edelbrock system. Carter, Edelbrock, Rochester, they all use a metering rod. And this spring right here is the critical element of this. Because what the spring does is it fights vacuum, engine vacuum. The power valve works on the same principle. Here's the spring on the power valve. So here's how this works. At cruising low throttle, small throttle openings, vacuum is high and that vacuum overcomes the spring, right? So here in the case of this power valve, this is the closed position for the valve. As soon as you touch the throttle, vacuum falls off. And at that point, the spring is overcome and it starts to flow fuel through these little passages over here. And it enriches the main circuitry. On the Edelbrock Carter style, same, same uh, uh, principle, the spring, manifold vacuum overcomes the spring as soon as you touch the throttle and this thing pops up. You see the metering rod here is two different thicknesses, here and here. And so what happens is as soon as you touch the throttle, this thing pops up and it goes to the smaller part of the metering rod and that allows more fuel to go through. So these things are tuned. I mean, if you're dealing with a stock engine, they're all essentially metered from the factory to work with stock engines. But as soon as you start th doing things like adding camshafts and whatnot that drop vacuum or, or change the engine's lower RPM characteristics, you have to tune these things by altering the springs. On the power valve, you would have to actually change the valve, power valve itself. You can't change the spring, it's incorporated. But on the Edelbrox Carters, and you know, a lot of other carburetors too, you can pick up something like this. It's a tune-up kit. And it'll have a variety of springs and whatnot. This one's all rusty. This has been around since the year of the flood. Different size metering rods. You can go a long way. If you've got an air fuel gauge, uh, that's, this is, that's the easiest way to tune this for your part final cruise. But, I mean, that's essentially it. It's one of the most least understood aspects of the carburetor. But in terms of drivability, fuel economy, and all of that, trying to get it to run like a fuel-injected engine, well, this is how you do it by tuning the springs, the diameters, the flow of those transition circuits. So that's it. Hopefully we'll live to see you tomorrow.